What You Missed in Part 1. In this second part, we spot some baby elephants, meet the local witch doctor, and do a little more dancing. Situated within the rare sand forest is Pinda Forest Lodge, a unique eco-friendly lodge that has been meticulously designed to flow in harmony with its natural surroundings. It's home to unique plant species and curious creatures that roam freely. The central fire pit resembles the home of the dark-backed weaver bird, and the lounge displays meticulously curated South African art and natural history books. This is also where renowned local artist Cecil Scottness retells the assassination of King Shaka Zulu. Stay active in the lodge's state-of-the-art gym. Or hang by the pool and watch the animals graze. The lodge features 16 air-conditioned suites. Floating on stilts above the forest floor, each glass-encased suite invites nature in while providing total privacy. This time, we got Ranger Josie and Tracker Mr. T. And almost immediately, we spot a coalition of cheetahs. And track down a lioness and her boys. And then, this happened. We found ourselves caught in the middle of a massive elephant herd. We had to keep really, really quiet as the elephants passed us. Turning the background music off now. We counted a total of 22 elephants, including these adorable babies. And off they go. What an incredible experience. We also chanced upon a herd that got spooked. This magnificent king of the jungle recently lost his brother to a snake bite. He's known to come to this spot to sulk. An element of surprise awaits you with every dinner. While out for your afternoon drive, the staff are hard at work setting up a gorgeous dinner out in the bush. 
by candlelight, under the stars, and a roaring campfire to keep you warm. Just done with the morning drive and a little bit of breakfast and now off to a Zulu village tour which is about 20 minutes away ah. or entering a Zulu home. When I say go, see kule kule e kai. See kule kule e kai. One, two, three, go. See kule kule e kai. It is imperative to announce your arrival. Each Zulu homestead is made up of several different buildings, including the round room where all special occasions are held. I got to spend time with the respected local Sangoma, a witch doctor and traditional healer. And discovered the significance of the ancestors in Zulu life. As well as their spiritual beliefs and the importance of their sacred lands. This is Tandiwe, who is 76 and kindly welcomed us into her home. She shared with us the importance of family, both past and present in Zulu culture. I got to wear traditional special occasion Zulu attire. Reserved only for married women. And of course, there was singing and dancing. <laughs> Saying a quick hello to Goose the Mongoose. Josie then drives us out to one of her favorite spots in Pinda. And then the path opens up to plains as far as the eye can see. A popular theory of the origins of the name White Rhinoceros is a mistranslation from Dutch to English. It's said to have been derived from the mistranslation of the Dutch word vade, which means wide in English. The word wide refers to the width of the rhinoceros's mouth. So early English-speaking settlers in South Africa misinterpreted the vade for white. And so the rhino with the wide mouth ended up being called the white rhino, and the other one with the narrow pointed mouth was called the black rhinoceros. Another mid-drive stop, this time in the middle of the rare sand forest. You'll never be hungry. Or thirsty. On our little coffee break here in this sand forest, which must be one of my favorite places uh, to stop for a mid-morning coffee. So I'm having this morning a mocha chaka rulo, which is um, coffee with hot chocolate, as well as a shot of amarula, which is a South African cream liqueur from the marula fruit, from the marula tree. And with that, I'm also having a crunchy, which is a typical South African snack that you can have in the morning made of oats and honey and coconut. A little of this, a little bit of this. Mm, perfect. These are genet tracks. So a spotted genet cat. It looks like just a house cat track if you think okay. about it. And it's, they are a funny looking animal. They are spotted, but they've got this long banded tail and they're small. They stand this high off the ground. They mm. look like a mongoose cross, a cat cross a lima. <laughs> and they're nocturnal and they eat insects. So that's for the genet. And then over here, I had to put my hand like this. You can see very similar shape. Mm. Yeah. That's a monkey, a baboon track. Oh, right. Sand forests are the fragments of coastal dunes, which were separated from the ocean over 
millions of years. Evening pit stop by one of the many water pans in Pinda, where we spot a rhino mum and calf, and where we fuel up before the final leg of the drive into the night. A call came in over the radio. We've got the big five. Oh my gosh. Wow, look at him. Red lights are used at night so as to be gentler on nocturnal eyes. Leopards are solitary, except for females and growing cubs. They typically spend the majority of the day resting in the thicket before getting active under the cover of darkness to hunt. Watching him up close in his own habitat is such a deeply compelling experience. A final evening in the Boma and it's farewell for now, Pinda. This bucket list trip has been beyond spectacular. I'm taking home with me incomparable moments and priceless memories. And I'm already planning my next bucket list destination. Where would you go?